Hey, welcome again to the Word Ministry of St. John's Lutheran Church here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 2415 Silas Creek Parkway. I pray that all of you had a blessed Thanksgiving uh, this past week, and I certainly pray that God will watch over uh, the health of you and your loved ones in the weeks to come, especially as the uh, pandemic stays with us. Um, I didn't get a chance to celebrate uh, Thanksgiving with my grandchildren. I have a uh, a grandson and a granddaughter. Uh, they were up in Kentucky, but I did get to tell them a couple of my Thanksgiving jokes, so I'm going to make you suffer as well. Uh, why did the turkey cross the road? Because it was the chicken's day off. Oh my goodness. What do you get when you cross a turkey and an octopus? Drumsticks for everybody. <laughs> I told you, I warned you, but <laughs> but the kids like them, and they go around telling them um, to everybody. Uh, we start the Advent season this week, which Advent is the season that leads up to Christmas. It's kind of a preparation season for Christmas celebration. And uh, so we're going to have Wednesday night Advent services here at St. John's. They start at 7 o'clock. You are more than welcome to come. Um, we will still be meeting under COVID protocols, you know, wearing a mask and safe spacing. Uh, and um, so I encourage you, if you'd like to come out on Wednesday nights, I'm going to be doing a, a series of messages on Wednesday nights about um, angels in the life of Jesus. Um, you know, uh, angels appeared at uh, his birth, certainly, and then they continued to be a part of his life while he was here on earth. I do want to remind you that uh, if your elementary school children are struggling with online learning only, um, we continue to meet in the classroom uh, five days a week here at St. John's Lutheran School. Uh, elementary ages, we go preschool all the way up through fifth grade. Um, and so if, if you would like to get your um, son or daughter or in for the second half of this school year, some in-classroom um, learning, um, please give us a call at uh, St. John's Lutheran School. <coughs> we, we also have a website, and you can reach that website through the church website uh, as well. Today we're going to continue our sermon series titled Heaven is real. And I'm going to use, continue to use the same call to worship and confession that we've been doing during this series, which focuses on um, uh, a confession of sin about how we're not worthy of, of the gift of heaven, but how we rejoice that God has given it to us in Jesus. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Teach us to number our days, O Lord, for we know that our Redeemer lives. Man is like the grass of the field, here today and gone tomorrow. But we know that in our flesh we shall see God. All praise to the triune God, the giver of eternal life, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we confess our sins to the Lord. O Almighty God, we do confess that we are not worthy to live forever with you in the holy joy that is heaven. We do not deserve your eternal love and blessing, not by who we are or by what we have done, but by faith we rejoice in your forgiveness and grace in Jesus. We claim the gift of eternal life, purchased for us through his blood. For the sake of your perfect and beloved Son, grant us everlasting life in heaven. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus, our Savior, has opened the door of heaven for us. He has removed the sin that barred our way. He has defeated death and turned it into victory. Rejoice in and with Jesus. God has freely given you the gift of eternal life. Amen. Our first lesson this week is taken from Psalm 150. Uh, it's a psalm that just uh, is really telling us that we should uh, rejoice and celebrate and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty firmament above. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our second lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, beginning in verse 31, reading verses 31 to 34. And the Lord said to them, What shall I liken the men of this generation, and what are they like? There are children sitting in the marketplace, calling to one another, saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist came, neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you said he has a demon. The Son of Man has come, eating and drinking, and you say, Look, he's a glutton and a wine-bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. This is the word of the Lord. Please join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Holy Gospel <clears throat> is also taken from the Gospel of Luke in the 14th chapter. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to Jesus, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and his servant he sent at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first one said, I bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Another one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and he said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, master, it has been done as you commanded and still there, there still is room. Well, then the master said to the servant, now go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who are invited shall taste my supper. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue our series this week on what heaven is really like. You know, whenever I'm teaching the, uh, the truths about heaven to the teenagers, each year in the confirmation class, nearly every year one of them will remark, Pastor, heaven sounds really boring. You know, just hanging around, worshiping all the time. When I was a teen, if you told me that all we were going to do forever in heaven is worship, I would have said, man, that sounds really boring. Because face it, to most 13-year-olds, worship is really boring. To some adults, worship is, is boring. I told this story in Bible study a while back, but when I first started serving um, my congregation in Hope Lutheran uh, in Virginia Beach, there was an older couple who left the church because they said that I was too joyful when leading worship on Sundays. They said that worship should be somber. But if there's one thing that heaven certainly will not be, that's boring. Now, I don't want to shock you by this comment, but there are times when preachers are criticized. In the Gospels, we see many such examples concerning the preaching of Jesus. After nearly every sermon he gave, Jesus was criticized. He was criticized for what he says. 
He was criticized for what he does, like healing someone on the Sabbath. And he's criticized for what he doesn't do, like overthrowing the Romans. And Jesus also was criticized for being too joyful. Actually, they called Jesus a party animal. In our second lesson from Luke, Jesus says they called him a glutton and a wino. Can you imagine that? Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the joy that the good news of Jesus brings to our hearts. The good news that he paid for our sins so that nothing can keep us from heaven. The good news that he went to prepare a place for us. But Lord, also the good news that that sustains us now in the midst of trials and tribulations, that gives us strength and faith um, to deal with our daily um, struggles. And so, Lord, we thank you for the joy that the world cannot take away from us, and that is our joy in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, the Bible often describes the kingdom of God like a party. Now, I know that kind of sounds silly, but when they asked Jesus, tell us about the kingdom, Jesus said, my kingdom is like a man who gave a great supper, a great Feast, or he said, My kingdom is like a wedding reception. You know, in America, we like to fancy ourselves as great partiers. We've got that spring break thing all around the country, and we've got Mardi Gras, and then on Super Bowl day parties everywhere. We've got our New Year's Eve parties. But when it really comes to parties, we are cultural amateurs. Jesus grew up in the Mediterranean. Now, the people in those countries, they knew how to party. And if there was one party they knew how to throw, it was a wedding banquet. You know, like that uh, Italian wedding scene in The Godfather, where the, the celebration lasted the entire day. Or the weddings of Greece, where the whole town celebrates and, and dances through the streets of the village. I don't know if you saw recently in the news that... Um, Despite the COVID regulations, there was a Jewish Hasidic community up in New York that recently held a wedding celebration for the rabbi's grandson and 3,000 people attended. Jesus was a Jew. Those old Jewish weddings were huge parties. They lasted for several days, sometimes up to an entire week. Everyone took off work. They stopped whatever else they had to do, and they partied for days. The party lasted until the bridegroom and the bride decided to leave. So Jesus said, you want to know what the kingdom of God is like? It's like I am the bridegroom. And he said, as long as the bridegroom is with you, you party. So the next time you're here at church and somebody asks you what time it is, you can respond with, it's party time. When you go to get the kids up for church and they ask, where are we going? You can tell them we're going to go have a party with Jesus. Where did Jesus make his first appearance and perform his first miracle? At a wedding party. And his first miracle was to turn water into wine so that the party could continue. Remember Zacchaeus? You know, you remember the song, The Wee Little Man Up in the Tree? But what Zacchaeus was, was a tax collector who went around ripping off the Jewish people. And when Jesus came, Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus because the crowd was too large. So he climbed up into a sycamore tree for he wanted his Lord to see. And at last the Savior came walking by and he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you're a dirty, filthy sinner and you're going to burn in hell. No. No. Jesus says to Zacchaeus, come on down, Zacchaeus. I'm going to your house today and you and I are going to have a party. So in our gospel lesson today from Luke, Jesus is throwing a party. And he looks out over the crowd and he says, hey, this is a good party, but there aren't enough people here. So he sends his servants out into the highways and the byways and he says, get more people. Drag them all in here. Go out and and get the lame and the blind and the poor. Pull them all in here. Go out into the highways and the hedges. We want this place to be packed full because we're going to have 
a party. Now, some might like the, not like this kind of theology. That's okay. There were people in Jesus' time who didn't like this kind of theology either. They were called the Pharisees. So the Pharisees came up to Jesus and said, Jesus, you're supposed to be a man of God, but every time we turn around, you're partying. They said, Jesus, you're nothing but a wine drinker and a glutton. In other words, these so-called high and mighty religious types, the church leaders, accused Jesus of being a party animal. And worst of all, they said, you don't even care who you party with. You're always hanging out and partying with the prostitutes and the lepers and the tax collectors and the sinners. You party with the lowlifes and the undesirables. And Jesus said to these church leaders, you're all a bunch of slimy snakes. You don't think Jesus said that? Well, in the old King James Version, Jesus saith unto them, O oh, you brood of vipers. What's a brood of vipers? A bunch of nasty, slimy, poisonous snakes. So Jesus said to them, look, John the Baptist came and John was serious. There was nobody more serious than John the Baptist. I mean, John was serious. Living out in the wilderness, yelling at the people, go to hell, go to hell. You'll go directly to hell. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. That was serious. John out in the wild, dressed in animal skins, eating nothing but granola bars and tofu. Jesus said, look, John came and he was serious and you didn't like him. I come and I party and you don't like me either. You know what? I don't think anybody could please you. Now, are there people in the church like that today that are never pleased with the leaders? Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? It's a description of the kingdom of God. A kid takes half his father's money and he goes off into a far country and he wastes that money on the wrong kind of party. Not unlike when you or I send our child off to college, right? You see, you and I know that the kingdom of God is like a party, but the world throws its own kind of parties, doesn't it? I've been there, and most of you have at one time or another, or we at least can observe the world's kind of parties. All the booze, all the sex, all the drugs, they're degrading and dehumanizing. Go to a fraternity house party. Go into the men's room. And there will be some guy on his knees, and he won't be praying. And his head is where no head was ever ordained to be. And in between the heaves, he'll look up at you and say, Great party, man. Listen, we need to realize that in Jesus, you and I have a celebration and a joy far beyond anything those who party with the world have. The world needs to see the joy and celebration our faith brings to us. Those people with Jesus, man, they really know how to party. Because nobody in the world has more to celebrate than we do. And the world should see that there's absolutely nothing more wonderful than partying with Jesus. Who wouldn't want to come to that kind of party? Years ago, each year, there was a festival, a campout of Christians in Pennsylvania called the Creation Festival, and they would have speakers and bands throughout the long, the long weekend. Uh, nearby, there was a very um, high church, Episcopal church. Uh, they usually worshipped about 50 people on a Sunday. But the young people at the Creation Festival found out one year that Tony Campolo was going to be speaking at that little Episcopal church. And Tony's very popular with the young people, and so the place was packed, 500 plus, people standing, standing room only. So the old priest comes out to the altar to start the service, and he pauses, and he looks around at the, the huge crowd. But not missing a beat, he begins to chant the way he begins every service. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And one kid in the balcony yelled, All right! And then a whole crowd began to sing songs and to praise Jesus. The old guy didn't know what to do. Because the last thing he expected when he said, this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it, the last thing he expected was that people would actually start rejoicing. So in the prodigal son story, the younger son goes out and blows all his father's money in the wrong lifestyle. And where does he wind up? He winds up with the pigs. There's a principle for you. If you party with the world, eventually you wind up with the pigs. So he ended up with the pigs and he says to himself, what am I doing here? I'm going to get up and go back to my father. Now the father, of course, represents God. So he says, I'm going to go back to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be one of your sons. I'll be content to be like one of your servants. Now put yourself in his place. He just blew his entire college tuition. He just blew half of his old man's money, drinking and carousing. What kind of um, reaction would you expect when you got home and walked back up the driveway. Well, that's what this young man expected. But the old man sees him as he gets off the bus and he runs to meet him and the kid starts to apologize and the old man cuts him off right away and he says, go out and get a robe, he yells. My son is wearing rags. Get a ring for my son. Dear father, he says, I'm not worthy. Charlie, Charlie, go out behind the barn and get the fat calf. You know, the really fat one. Kill that heifer because my son is in the kingdom again and we're going to have a party. But then, there was an older brother. There always seems to be an older brother, and usually they get elected to the church council or elders. You can hear the older brother when the sinners are coming into the kingdom, into the church. I've been around this church for 25 years. Faithful in season, faithful out of season. Always did the right thing. Nobody ever threw me a party. No wonder, right? And so the father comes to the son and he says, don't be like that. This is your brother. He was dead. He was lost. And now he's been found. Come sing and dance with us and join the party. Brothers and sisters, there is more partying in heaven over one lost sinner who is brought into the kingdom than for hundreds of us who have been in it for a long time. Now, listening, you might say today, well, pastor, I don't feel like partying. I don't feel like celebrating. There are tough things going on in my life right now. I don't feel like praising God. That's okay. But celebrate Jesus anyway. Because when we begin to celebrate Jesus, celebrate who Jesus is, and celebrate what Jesus has done for us, including preparing our place in heaven, when we celebrate the promise Jesus gives us, and the presence Jesus is with us in our tough times, and the Jesus who answers our prayers, when we do celebrate Jesus, God begins to lift our spirit, to renew and strengthen our hope and our joy in the midst of the trial that we're going through. What a Jesus we have to celebrate. Jesus is the one who turns all of despair, even death, he turns into a celebration. A heavenly party that's gonna last forever. Scripture says weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Dear people of God, people of celebration, nobody has more reason to party than we do. The bridegroom is with us. He is our joy. He is our strength. He is our comfort. He is our forgiveness. Jesus is the party host who's gone to prepare for us an eternal banquet. We in the church We need to get back to celebrating what Jesus has done for us, to celebrate who Jesus is. Somebody might say, well, that wasn't a church service. It's more like a pep rally. 
Dear friends in Jesus, who has more to cheer about? The football pep squad at the high school? Or you and I who have Jesus and you and I who know that a great heavenly party awaits us? Awaits us and all of our loved ones. When I lie on my dying bed, when I in a delirium of pain and medication, when with my last ounce of strength I turn to my wife Gwen and ask, Honey, what time is it? She better say, Don't worry, Tom, because it's party time. Amen. Join with me at home in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, again, I encourage you to uh, say it out loud with me. Um, if you are watching with a loved one, hold hands. It's a good time for us to join our hearts and hands um, in prayer to the Lord. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and fill you with his peace. Amen. Thank you again for being with us uh, this week in the Word Ministry of St. John's Lutheran Church. And we look forward to you joining us again next week as we continue to be blessed as we study the wonders of heaven. Thank you.